Hello and welcome to the Pro 14 season preview from Driving Mall. First up, what I have to ask you to do is to head over to drivingmall.com and check out the article on this one because um, Wales Dragon 9 has uh, written up a fantastic preview um, and his article is below mine. He goes into depth into every single team giving you a lot more insight, sorry, Dragon Wales 9, a lot more insight than I'm going to do here. I'm just going to quickly run through um, last season, uh, tell you about the new conference system uh, in brief, uh, and then give you my idea as to how each team has done over the summer and which how they'll end, finish in the conferences. He goes into a bit more de de detail, um, talking about each team and how they've uh, and, and stuff, so do check that out. Also, um, I will be doing predictions every week for the Pro 14 so to make sure you don't miss out on those, do sign up for my newsletter. Link above on Twitter, down below on YouTube. And don't forget, obviously, to give it the old thumbs up. Remember, I'm at Driving Mall on uh, Twitter. You get all my stuff there as well. OK, I think that's covered most of the stuff. So let's crack on. So how did last season finish? So last season finished with the Scarlets, who are champions. They built on their previous season where uh, they'd done well, uh, but faded towards the end of the season. Last season, they got themselves into the playoffs one away in Ireland twice to win the whole thing. Munster were uh, the surprise package, uh, topping the table um, with uh, 86 points. One point behind them was Leinster with Scarlets in third, making it into the playoffs, um, another eight points back. Uh, and then the Ospreys sneaked in um, with being another eight points back again. Just missing out on the playoffs were Ulster, uh, who was on 68 points. Uh, Glasgow finished 10 points back on them and then we got into the bottom half and quite often you see uh, there is a top half and bottom half split uh, in the Pro 12 historically um, but actually the Cardiff Blues got themselves into a bit of no man's land and nearly did challenge that top half. Um, Connacht who were the previous champions and uh, then had a poor season and then we had really kind of the also rounds of Edinburgh, Treviso, Dragons and Zebre coming up at the bottom. So that's how the last season finished. Um, now this season obviously uh, the Pro 12 has grown into the Pro 14 now. Is this them growing up or is this them growing an extra tyre? Um, we're going to find out at the beginning, at, by, by the end of the season, I suppose, as to how people um, adopt um, the new, the new set, setup. They're being joined by the Cheetahs and the Kings from the uh, Super Rugby. Now, if you want to know my thoughts on those two sides, I did a video about a week ago. Uh, but in brief, they're going to have had a year and a half long season, which is just crazy uh, and so to expect too much of them this first season uh, is probably uh, being a bit ambitious. Uh, fra um, franchises or teams that enter new, structure, new, new um, leagues quite often take a year or two uh, um, well, or more uh, to get used to it. Um, at least these established teams coming in, unlike teams that are being thrown together. So um, whilst they will increase the interest, don't expect them to be challenging at the top end too much too soon. So... How have they structured this then with extra teams and not having a longer season? Well, we have two conferences of seven teams. And the way they've split it is two Irish teams in each side, two Welsh teams in each uh, conference, one Scottish team each side, one, Irish, one, one uh, Italian team and one South African team. They've also said that this, these conferences are not set in stone and they'll be rejigged after every season, depending on the results and where teams finish. So uh, this is to try and keep a balance in the two sides. Um, so the two conferences on one side, we have uh, Munster, uh, Connacht from Ireland, uh, the Ospreys and Cardiff Blues from Wales, Glasgow from Scotland, uh, Zebra from Italy and the Cheetahs from South Africa. Now, if we have just have a quick look at that. As I said, we have like a top half and a bottom half uh, of, of the table historically in Pro 12. If you look at those sides, Munster, Connacht, um, Ospreys, uh, um, are all decent sides. They've all been at the top end or winning it over the last few seasons. The Blues are a decent side. They've sort of ended up in that um, top uh, or, or, or in that kind of middle ground uh, chasing that. Um, uh, Glasgow. Uh, so you've got five proper teams in there um, with the Cheetahs, who were the weaker of the two um, South African sides last season, um, and uh, Zebra. I mean, the Italian sides will be weak. So you've got five, at least five decent sides in there. Um, I'll go into a bit more about the Cheetahs later on. If we look at the Conference B, you've got um, Leinster and Ulster from Ireland, 
um, Scarlets and Dragons from Wales, Edinburgh, Kings and Treviso round that one out. In there, so you've only probably got really three decent sides in there in Leinster, Scarlets and Ulster. Dragons, Edinburgh are always at the bottom end. Uh, Southern Kings um, have lost all their players, so they're going to struggle in Treviso, the Italian scene. So you've got three decent sides on this side. So they haven't been that even, uh, so they haven't quite got it right. I would have switched Edinburgh and Glasgow and put the top um, uh, Scottish side along with the top Welsh sides, uh, and that I think would have evened things up. So the Conference A is going to be the harder of the two, um, is, is my opinion, um, compared to um, Conference B. But we'll see how that kind of pans out. At least they've tried to make them even, even if they haven't kind of got the execution quite right. So um, at the end of the season, uh, so each conference plays its, everyone in their own team, uh, their own conference twice. They play the other conference once, and then they play the other countries in their team to pad out the uh, other countries, um, uh, the other teams in their country um, to pad out the games to keep all the derby games, which are the ones that create the main interest, most interest. Um, and then the top. Um, Three sides, uh, three sides in each uh, conference going to the playoffs, and we have some finals and stuff. So that's how it's all going to kick off. Uh, if you want to read that in detail, I say go and look, check out the website. Um, Wales Dragon 9 is a much better job than I'm just doing here quickly. So let's run through the teams in Conference A um, and have a look at what's been going on. Glasgow first up. Now, of course, the big change there is going to be Dave Rene has come in as the new coach. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see how quickly he... Uh, um, Gets the team up to up, up, up working in his his image. Uh, he's been doing a lot of good handover. There's been lots of Skype calls between him and the coaches that are already there. Um, so it looks like it's been a, a well managed um, handover. If we look at some of the um, player changes, um, the, at the first sight, there's been an absolute overhaul um, with something like sort of 12 or so players um, leaving. But when you look at where they're going, London Scottish, um, Doncaster Knights. Heidelberg and RK. I mean, these aren't players who are going off to bigger and better um, teams. Um, these are on the whole, so it's not really a big loss of, um, of of skill. And again, if you look at the players that are coming in, you've got five players stepping up from the academy, so it's not as big a turnover as you'd think. Um, and they've got some South African, um, uh, sorry, some Southern Hemisphere uh, talent coming in. Um, uh, with Kelby from the Stormers, you've got Gibbons from Hurricanes, Masanga from the Chiefs. Um, so there is plenty of players coming in, uh, though, and we'll see how they all adapt to the new systems. Um, so we may see that the Warriors don't uh, have a, a bit slow to kick off their season. Munster, the big change in Munster is going to be Erasmussen leaving, obviously, and how that affects the coaching setup. The turnover, yes, they've had a few players um, leave. Uh, Donica Ryan going to, to Racing, for example. Um, but um, on the whole, it's a fairly steady um, squad. Again, a lot of players, five players stepping up from the academy, which brings that consistency, which is good. Um, and well, we've got JJ Hanrahan coming in from the Saints, uh, etc. It's not they're not sort of big names and big turnovers. So the Munster should hit the ground running, um, and it's going to be a matter of how well uh, they the, the the new head coach or director of rugby or whatever the title is. Um, take comes in uh, and takes over uh, to see how they go through the season. Ospreys next up, um, very settled. I mean, they lost Sam Underhill, um, which is a, a, a big loss for them. Um, Josh Matavesi, Matavesi also gone, who they probably want to have kept. Um, coming in, James Hook, Corey Allen, um, Brian Mataji. Uh, so, a, so, a very, so only three players coming in. That's a very settled squad. Um, they finished uh, in the playoffs last year. And now that's going to be their target again this year. The Blues, the Blues flattered to deceive a bit last year. They did very well and then faded out. Um, but the, with the coaching structure in place, again, a very settled squad. Only three players coming in. Damian Welsh from Exeter Chiefs, Sion Bennett from Saints uh, and Jack Roberts from Tigers. So all coming in from England, Aviva Premiership sides. Um, and only uh, six players leaving, two of which were um, released. So not a big turnover there. They should hit the ground running. Second year of this coaching thing. Uh, coaching setup, um, we should see a bit more consistency and see them challenging throughout the season uh, rather than fading quite so much. Connacht, um, Connacht have released a lot of players. Um, again, as the Irish provinces do, they brought, they're bringing players in through their um, their academy. Uh, so, uh, so to go along with a few players from down under, not big names that I would recognise even following Super Rugby. So. Uh, and with a new coach coming in there, I think um, Connacht have got a good chance of struggling um, this season. 
The Cheetahs, they've just finished their season. They're rolling into the next season. So only two new players, as you'd expect, both from Southern Kings, ironically enough. Um, their problem is going to be injuries. I think they're, they're, they're first, th- first, 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 second and third choice um, uh, fly halves are all crocs at the moment. Um, and so, uh, and also how they juggle the Pro 14 along with the Curry Cup is going to be an issue. Um, so I think the, 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 the Cheetahs, after a long season, you know, injuries uh, and fatigue is going to take its toll um, for them. Finally, Zebre, um, and as is kind of traditional with the, the uh, Italian sides, massive turnover, a lot of players, Italian players coming in. Um, it looks like they're replacing foreign players mainly with Italian players, so hopefully long term it'll be good for them. But uh, in the short term, I can't see them having the quality. So what does that mean? That means that, and I'll try and just show the A side here, that I think that Glasgow will top the group, followed by Munster, Ospreys and Blues. Connacht uh, and, and then Cheetahs and Zebra are going to be down at the bottom end, I believe. Um, Munster may upset Glasgow at that top because Glasgow may have a, have a slow start. Um, but uh, as I say, Munster, Ospreys and Blues all should have settled squads and have a good start. I think Connacht and Cheetahs um, could be scrapping it out um, amongst themselves down there uh, with Zebra uh, bringing up the rear. Go okay, moving on now. Let's look at um, the B side, and the, t- the side that stands out here clearly is Leinster. Um, and again, a very settled squad um, from from, our, from Ireland. Only two players coming in from outside: um, Scott Fardy uh, from the Brumbies, James Lowe from the Chiefs. Two quality operators there. Uh, Fardy, obviously Aust- uh, Australian uh, international. Uh, James Lowe scores tries for fun in Super Rugby. So they've got some real quality coming in. Um, and then everyone else that's coming up uh, is basically uh, being promoted from the academy. So that consistency, uh, a solid coaching setup. Leinster um, came second last year by one point. You've got to say um, they are looking at having a good season this year as well. Moving on, Scarlets, who are the champions, have had a bit of turnover um, with players um, leaving. But again, uh, a Van der Meer was uh, is probably one of the ones that they'd want to have kept. Liam Williams also they would have wanted to have kept. So they are losing players um, that they would rather have kept. Um, but they have also got Lee Halfpenny coming in. Um, uh, so they're also bringing back in some quality as well. I, um, I would be looking at them to push on again uh, as champions. Now it's going to be harder as champions. Everyone's going to be gunning for them. But um, I'd expect them to have another good season. Ulster. Now... Uh, obviously, Ruan Pinar has gone, uh, but apart from that, no one else has left of any um, significance. Again, as the Irish, Irish teams do, they promote players from the academy. So most of the people that are coming in um, are from the academy. There's six players coming in from the academy, um, a couple down from South Africa as well, and then also Christian Liefbano. Now, he's a guy who has had leukemia uh, and has come back and played for the, um, the Brumbies. Uh, just at the very end of the season. And because he's had a season out, I think he's coming up here just for the Super Rugby off-season to get some game time under his belt. Um, a fantastic story uh, that have been coming back from that um, disease, uh, and hopefully he does well there. Um, but Ruben Pienaar is basically going to be the band they're going to miss. Um, now, Ulster flattered or, or, or disappointed last year, um, and uh, I'm not sure they've added the quality or the strength and depth um, for them to push on. Um, we'll have to see how those academy products do. Edinburgh. Um, now, of course, the big change at Edinburgh is all, uh, just like the uh, just like their um, Scottish um, brothers is on the coaching side um, with Richard Cockrell coming in. What's going to be really interesting is does Cockers do it his way, or does Cock, or, or is he going to? Um, is Gareth Townsend uh, going to be telling him there's a certain style needed for Scotland and how well uh, that relationship goes? So that's going to be really kind of interesting. Um, a bunch of lots of foreign players um, have left. Um, and we've seen a, 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 um, a big promotion from the academy. So that's got to look good for um, Edinburgh and for Scotland long term. Uh, there's that growing from within. Robbie Fruin um, and Van der Meer from Montpellier uh, do add some class. Um, but uh, the question is, how fit is Robbie Fruin? How much is he actually going to play? Um, uh, but there's going to be at least bring some experience uh, and working off the, the park there. Um, Edinburgh perennial underachievers, I think it's going to take time for Cockerell to do his stuff uh, and get them up and running personally. The Dragons are next up. 
Um, again, a relatively settled side, Gavin Henson coming in there. Um, it's going to be interesting. Zach, Zach Kirchner as well um, from Leinster. So um, they have added a couple of players, probably lost a couple that they didn't want to lose um, as well, uh, but mainly, uh, I think, an improvement there. New coaching structure, uh, new ownership being under the um, WRU. And this is something that I think they're going to be um, growing. Really interesting uh, interview um, and podcast on the attacking scrum with the new head coach there. So go away and listen to that. Uh, I found it really interesting that every single one of their training sessions is open to the public and you can come in and see it. Uh, very different to a lot of trainings, a lot of um, setups where uh, the, the um, most of the training sessions are closed sessions and they don't want to give away secrets. Here, they're really trying to connect with the, um, the community, connect with the fans um, and grow the fan base. They realize that they've had problems in the past um, with, with the old Dragons, Newports and Gwent um, whole thing not really merging very well uh, and so uh, it's good to see steps taken there around the fan base uh, and it looks like they've got the right they're getting the right structures in place um, I would not expect to see it happen uh, turn around overnight though Treviso um, who are the better of the two Italian teams um, uh, uh, also, uh, who uh, I've gone blank sorry I'm trying to find the squad list I know they have got some interesting players um, who have joined them that's right it's under beef of Benetton at Treviso um, Marty Banks joining from the Highlanders. Uh, he should help them um, with their game management around the park. Uh, uh, and then um, a number of other uh, sort of Kiwis, um, Argentinian, South Africans joining in there. So it's going to be how they mould all these different players together. Again, high turnover in, over, over there. Um, ho uh, but um, So I think they're going to struggle. Finally, the Kings. Now, the Kings uh, were one of the um, feel-good stories from the Super Rugby, um, as and, and towards the end of the season, they really did pick up and do much better than expected. Uh, a friend of mine, Rugby Numbers, runs a rugby power index, uh, and for him, the Kings were the most improved team over the season. Now, the problem is, they lost all their players at the end of the Super Rugby season. Uh, and their squad, um, when I looked at it a week or so ago, had one prop and one hooker named. Uh, now, clearly, they can't even put out a side um, to, to play a game, never mind win a game with that. So their problem is going to be rebuilding their squad after so many players left the, um, and really having no time to sign anybody new. They've lost um, at least 10 players um, during this um, and they're getting a whole bunch of players loaned to them from other teams. So four coming in from the Sharks, for example. Now, um, how well that's going to work, uh, we'll have to wait and see. They do have a good coach there. Um, he, is, he can build, because uh, they had a brand new squad at the beginning of this season, uh, at the beginning of this Super Rugby season as well. So he can build a squad um, during a season. But um, this is going to be a real tough ask for him. Uh, and let's look, and, and you've got to say, they're a project for two, three years' time. Um, definitely not for this year. So what does that mean? That means the order I talked about the teams is the order that I expect them to finish. Um, Leinster, followed by Scarlets, and then Ulster. Those three should be the top teams in this group. Edinburgh and Dragons will be some way back um, fighting it out. And then Treviso, uh, and we'll have to wait and see what sort of squad Kings put out. Um, but Kings should uh, should also struggle along with Treviso. So that's how I see it all finishing. And so go check out the website to see how um, uh, how my guest writer thinks it will finish. He has a different view, and he also goes into the playoffs and tells you who he thinks is going to win the whole thing. So go check out drivingmore.com. That's been my Pro 14 Roundup. As I say, I will be... Um, back every week or every round should I say because of the, the breaks with my uh, pr predictions for each round so do check out those and sign up for the newsletter link above on Twitter down below on YouTube and please give it a thumbs up share it and all of that kind of cool stuff also check out the new hash rugby chat podcast on iTunes and all other good podcast players <laughs>